Hello folks, today we're going to process the Heart and Soul Nebula. My buddy from New York sent me this and asked me if I could process it for him, so I said I would and I'm going to make a video of me doing it. So here we go. Uh, the camera he used was a Sony A6000 and it's been modified so I believe it has the filter removed so it's more sensitive to the hydrogen alpha wavelength which you can kind of see on the desktop here. You can make out the heart nebula and the soul nebula and that's also why it has a red color cast. So with that let's get rid of it by using the automatic background extractor. I'm going to set this to 25 down here to correction, we want to subtract that from the image. We're going to drag that on the image. Pixel Sight does its magic, and now it's done. And here's the background it extracted, which is the red. We don't need this one anymore. We're going to name this RGB. Next thing I want to do is I want to crop it, and just so I can get rid of some of the stacking artifacts that were left over when he stacked the image. I hold the control button down and drag here, control button here, hit the check mark. All right, that's done. Stretch it to see what it looks like. So this is just a preliminary stretch, and you can see he did capture the heart nebula and the soul nebula. And there's a little nebulosity down here on this star, and he got the double cluster as well. So with that, we're going to do the noise reduction on it first, so I'm going to extract the luminance. With the luminance, I'm going to stretch this, I'm going to open up screen transfer, do the stretch, open the histogram transformation, I'm going to drag this down onto the histogram transformation bar. Then you hit the square button to apply it. Close this, close this. I'm going to undo the stretch. And there's our stretched image. And what I like to do is open up the curves next. And I want to lower the values of the black and white. So I want to make it darker. So I'm going to get capture more of the space in this image. Because that's what we're going to apply our noise reduction to. Hit this square to apply it. <coughs> Close that. We're going to apply this to this image. So there's the mask. Anything in red that's protected, anything in white is going to be affected. So we don't want to affect the stars. We want to protect them. So we're going to mask, invert mask. Then I have a luminance noise reduction thing here. I'm going to drag and drop it onto the image. It's going to run its thing and be finished in a few seconds. Alright, that's done. Now I want to reduce the noise on the chrominance. So I'm going to do the same thing. Drag and drop on there, let go. And what the chrominance does, it gets rid of the blotchiness in the colors, which usually happens a lot in the dark space. And I'll show you here in a minute what it does. So I want to do that. Mask, show mask, let's zoom in. So this has the noise reduction applied. We'll hit the back button. That's without the noise. That's with the noise. Without, with. Now if we zoom in closer, you can see better. So this is with the noise reduction. And that's without. You see the purple banding right here? There it is. So that that's what the chrominance does. It gets rid of the banding and the color blotchiness in there. Now with that, we can remove the mask. Close that out. Yes. And let's do an auto color on it. So we're going to script, utilities, auto color. This auto color script will do its best guess to color correct the image to what it thinks it should be. And yes, this usually takes a little bit of time, depending on how fast your machine is. It's 
done and this is what it thinks the best color representation should be. You can see there's a lot of green in this image but we're going to fix that later. So with that we're going to undo the stretch and you can either do an auto stretch or a manual stretch. I like to do the manual stretch and I use the histogram transformation with that. And so this is your histogram transformation process. Uh, there's no where it says no view selected. You want to select your image, so you choose RGB. And you can see it's been stretched a little bit, so we want to stretch it more. We want to see the preview of it, so we click the circle. It says real time preview. That comes up, and then we want to do little tiny stretches. And you can see that it already brightened a little bit. And to apply that, you want to hit the square button. We're going to keep doing that. That's enough of that. Now we want to darken a little bit. So I'm going to raise the darks, or lower the darks, I should say. Raise the midtones a little bit. Stretch it again. We'll do it once more. Reset that. The darks. That should be good for now. So now we have that. And so that's a. Uh, your stretched image right here. Now what we want to do is reduce the stars on here. You don't have to, but I like to because there's a special trick in here that I learned and it helps to bring out the nebulosity, which you'll see here in a minute. You know, script, easy processing suite, easy star reduction. Read the warning, click understood. Uh, no view selected, so you want to find your image, which is RGB. We want to go down here to create a star mask. It's going to create its own star mask, and once it's done, it'll let you know. And this could take a little bit longer depending on the speed of your computer because it's very uh, CPU intensive. Alright, created the star mask, now we're ready to run it. So we run Easy Star Reduction. Do that. Creates a couple more masks. Again, right now it's creating a starless image, and when it creates these starless images, it uses a lot of your CPU processing power, so if you have an older machine, it's going to take a little bit longer. So it's finished that and supplied the star reduction already. So we can see what it did by zooming in. We're going to click the back button. So you see the stars here? Watch. So this is without the star reduction. This is with the star reduction. See how it lowers the brightness value of the stars? This is with, this is without. And it also shrinks the smaller stars down a little bit. So you might be pretty happy with this photo yourself, or you might not be. One more thing that I like to do with it is to open up the star, star mask so you can see that. And so this is all the stars that it selected, and then that's what it, redu that's what it shrunk down. And with the starless image, you open that up, and it created this. And it's stretched, so I like to unstretch it, and then I'll go to curves do this and I would like to darken this some raise that up a little bit apply it and then I'm going to pull the luminance mask out of this and with this we're going to use this as a mask to bring out more of the nebulas from the heart and the soul and this little nebula down here. I'm not sure what the name of that one is. And then we're also going to get rid of these stars here. So that up curves again. Go to the preview. And then we're going to just mess around with this for a little bit to get as best as we can. That looks about good. We hit apply. Now to get rid of all this other stuff here, if we're going to open up the range selection, go to the preview. We're going to drag this lower limit slider to the right. You're going to see it slowly going to start to bring out the 
outlines of the objects. As you can see here, here's the heart, here's the soul, and the soul nebula, and the stars. We're not really worried about the white stuff because we're going to get rid of that a little bit more. And then we're going to smooth it out some so you can get a very rough outline. Right about there. I'll hit apply. Close that, close that, and now we have we have our range mask. And I'll show you what we're gonna do with it. You can close this guy, drag it up here, close this guy out. Now watch, I'll apply this on here now to show you. So with that, it is so see the red conceals and then the white parts reveal. So you see all the reds covering the space and these empty spots here, which is the nebula, these clusters, which we don't want to do anything to. And this little guy down here. So we'll open up curves to the preview and you can watch. You see, so this is like an exact copy of the little mass that we just made. Or you can lower it. Or you can even invert the mask. Same thing if you want to darken like that. But we don't want to do that because it doesn't look too good. So we're going to close this out. Close this. Mask. Remove. Go here. We want to save this. So we want to save this as a 16-bit TIFF. You know, name it wherever you want. Save it wherever you want. Hit save. Oh no. We didn't rename it. So hit save. Choose 16-bit. Now find out wherever you saved it, which is probably right here on the desktop, which mine is. And then we want to open it up in Photoshop. Now within Photoshop, you want to select the paintbrush. And then you also want to make sure the black and white color palette is selected. And then we want to mask, we want to paint black over all of this stuff here. So gonna, this is the cluster we're getting out. I'm going to do all of this. Now there's that little bit of nebulosity down here in the corner, which you want to keep. So slowly go around there like that. Don't get too close to these nebulas here. So you get the idea, and then whenever you're happy with what you have, just go to File, Save, go back into PixInsight, we can minimize this, File, Open, find your range mask you just saved from Photoshop, I'm going to bring that in here, and now this is where the fun part happens, we want to apply the mask to the image, which is good, and we want to open up the curves. Now since we masked out these clusters up here, it should not be affected by what we're about to do. Now we want to bring out more of red in the nebula nebulas over here, so we click on the red channel. And see just like that, it just brings out the nebula. But you don't want to do it too much, but also right now it doesn't matter because we still have to do one more function before we're done. So you can adjust the intensity of it saturation so just find something you're happy with so say that's good and then apply it close that let's remove the mask now you might think you're done with that but we still have the green left in here so we're going to open up SCNR and this is going to remove the green from the image just like that it removed all the green from the image. So there's with the green removed, and we'll go backwards. You see the green here? This is with the green, without the green, with the green, without the green. Now, if you notice, you might see some magenta cast on the stars. If you want to get rid of the magenta on the stars, you can go down here to scripts, utilities, and correct magenta stars. You choose what you want, the level you want, hit execute. 
but you see what happened it made the it made the red into orange we don't want that so we're going to close that out and we're going to revert back to it we're going to try the remove magenta stars that I have now that gives you more of a natural look now this to me is better than this one just because this looks more magenta while this one's red and if you're happy with that then you can go ahead and save it to whatever you wish so you're going to save you know, what do you want heart and soul save as a TIFF or you can save it as a bitmap, JPEG, PNG XISF, whatever you want, and then save and you're done. You want to do 16-bit if you're saving as a TIFF so you can open up in Photoshop later. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you have an image you want me to process for you, you can go ahead and contact me, email it to me, and I'll possibly do another video on how to process your image. So thanks again for watching. Hit the like and subscribe button. I'll talk to you later. Bye.